Good evening, everybody. Come on in. Let's make this work this evening and do some work. I have a very unusual topic tonight. And um, it is kind of something uh, that's given me an itch today. Uh, but I want to talk to you about it. Hello, Jacole, 100% Hutch. I miss you. Haven't seen you in a while. Lisa J Music, uh, N-A underscore somebody. Hello, called out 92. Uh, hello, greetings to all of you. Broke into peace. Uh, hello to you. Um, right, Yasmin, uh, King J, Vic, Vicky Henderson. Uh, good evening, Daniel Mackey. Emery, you can benefit for this, from this. You can benefit from this. Brian Lopez, I see you in here. Hello, LeBron friend. Hello, my precious one. Listen, we have gotten very, very, very close, haven't we? Don't we just love each other? Prophet is hat the way I see you, sweetheart. Uh, hello to everyone in here. Um, I hope you have had a great day. I see you, Diamond. And I hope you have allowed this day to bring you nothing but victory, nothing but peace, nothing but success. God bless each of you. Thank you for all of you that have been sharing uh, the Periscope so far. Uh, also, for those of you that have been sharing the word about my brand new series entitled Empty. It's a radical confrontation of the religious spirit. Um, and uh, we're getting ready and prepping for that. We want to reach thousands of people, if it be possible, for the Lord. Lady D. Wilford, I see you in here. Um, and so thank you for sharing that with me. All nations, you know, no empty seats uh, for the rest of this month. Um, we're getting ready to do some work uh, for the king and present him with some trophies. On tonight, we have a subject matter that is a bit different from our common subject matter. I'm going to be talking about the key to destructive relationships. If you want to say uh, destructive relationships, distracting relationships, uh, hey, Heggy, uh, all of that. I'm going to give you the key uh, to having a destructive relationship. So this is very important for you. God bless each of you. If this is freezing, catch me on the replay. Uh, if you are freezing, then go back in, go back out and come back in. It's going to be good. Yes, on tonight. I got a relationship itch today. My wife um, did a very interesting periscope and um, uh, you can handle it, Rush. And my wife um, uh, challenged me about sharing her story with myself. She released a periscope and an email entitled how I got engaged in four months. And I have been feeling God turn my heart to the area, area of marriage and family. It's one of the things I'm working on, um, resourcing more people with because people, uh, are not doing so well. Um, with this subject and you know, I'm not really the relationship guru expert guy uh, But I am a deliverance and spiritual warfare man. And so uh, by default because I uh, am actively involved in and invested in deliverance and spiritual warfare um, I know the power of of relationships and I know how hell uses them and I know how heaven uses them and I know that that hell is afraid of relationship done right uh, and God is often grieved by relationships attractions romanticism done wrong there is a way to do romance righteously if you are paying attention to me so far I want you to write this down there is a way to do romance righteously there is a such thing as righteous romance I know you don't think so I know you don't think God has any opinions about your love life and your attractions and your type and all that stuff I understand that okay uh, but there is a way to do romance righteously so I'm not gonna let my wife outdo me <laughs> I'm gonna bring my and I, are you watching this baby girl yeah, you're on here. I'm going to bring my opinion to it. Now, you know, this is not my normative subject uh, matter. And, you know, uh, I have a broad spectrum of things uh, that I like to give thought to. But I'm just going to give my piece on this um, and, and my thoughts on this. Um, my wife and I have been married for about 11 years now. And believe it or not, we spent the first several years of our 
um, um, marriage coaching, counseling. I was a pastor, so we did quite a bit of counseling. We don't really do marriage counseling now unless it's one of our elders and one of our pastors. So we'll counsel um, if it's a, a, one of the, the elders or the pastors that we oversee. But before our church became sizable, we used to counsel everybody. I mean, we were the pretty much one of the only couples that were married. So when any other couples wanted to embrace uh, marriage, we were the ones doing the counseling. Thanks be unto God who uh, causes us to triumph because I wasn't really a... A huge fan of counseling. I'm, I'm a matter of fact guy. I like to get to the point. Uh, and so counseling uh, about marriage and romance is not always my favorite thing to do. However, um, we do it now when it's senior pastors, elders under us, uh, people that we cover. Um, so anyway, because we did that, and obviously we pastor now, there's a lot of wisdom that you gain from walking with married couples for preparing uh, people for marriage, um, for dealing with people's ideas about marriage, dealing with people's ideals about marriage. And one of the things that you probably would be shocked to find out is that there are many Christians who have not sanctified their ideas about of romance. You know, there's a lot of people who who love the Lord, or so they say. They praise the Lord. You know, they sing to the Lord. They shout to the Lord. They sow unto the Lord. Um, but you know, their 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 romantic interests are are under restraint. You know, it's kind of one of the things that they have kind of moved you know, out of the way of, of being able to apply to principles of faith or principles of righteousness. Thank you, by the way, uh, for those of you who are periscoping this or sharing this. Thank you so, so, so very much. So you would be shocked or sharing this. Thank you so much. You would be shocked at how many spirit-filled believers um, have different value systems, often contrary to the word of God and the wisdom therein um, about the Bible and about, I'm, I'm sorry, and about romance and about uh, picking a mate, about make selection, about responsible dating. Um, so th these are things that obviously are, are, are human nature, something that um, uh, you kind of get used to as you deal with people that they have really weird ideas about um, um, relationship and datings and all of that stuff, right? So you are on this periscope probably uh, because you are interested in this subject matter. It's a hot topic, um, whether you're dealing with um, 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 courting versus dating or what it means to be uh, 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 equally yoked or what it means to who should pursue who is a common subject matter for all of this. I, I don't have the time to begin to even start with, with crafting that total paradigm or construct for that. But I am going to give you the key to having a destructive relationship. If you want to be sure that you are entering into a relationship that is bound to be destructive, that is destined for disaster, that is destined to be a distraction, then you are going to be doing what I'm going to be talking about tonight, all right? And I have to get to this before this starts freezing up. You know, we have a tendency to break Periscope and it starts freezing, so I'm going to make sure I get this out to you. Now, here is the absolute best advice over the last decade that I have given the unmarried, because I don't believe in calling singles singles. The Bible calls them unmarried. Um, the best advice that I have given consistently, directly, um, and, and most frequently to both in, uh, pursuant couples, courting couples, uh, married couples, is this. When you are considering for a romantic relationship and when you are evaluating whether or not there is compatibility okay with you and another person you know um feasibility for who you are helpmate that that God is trying to give you if you a man and uh, a husband if you are a woman here is the most important wisdom that you can use as the litmus test for whether or not you should proceed. And here we go. You must pursue 
relationship with an equal. I'm going to let that simmer while I take some vitamin C. The way to guarantee that your relationship is going to be destructive, disastrous, or distracting, the way to guarantee that that is going to happen is that you involve yourself with something, with someone that is not your equal. That is, you are to pursue, consider, or be interested in relationship with a person that is your spiritual, mental, and emotional equal. The most common reason relationships become destructive distracting and 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 disastrous is that people pursue relationships with those that are not their equal they date down they court down they they I'm sorry let me let me help you I know this is freezing this should be better in a while they date down they court down they search down. They shop down. The secret to having a destructive relationship is by excusing whether or not a person is your equal or not. Now, a lot of you on here um, are attracted to people that are not necessarily your equals. And depending upon how desperate you are, obviously this is probably more common to women than it is men, but I guess it's applicable to both. Um, the more desperate you are, the more forgiving you are about whether or not a person is your equal. So the way that looks is this. There's a lot of individuals who are interested in people who are not their mental equal, which means now, and, and by being equal, I don't mean the same. Somebody can be a, a equal and they can have different strengths as you. They can have different weaknesses as you. Um, they don't necessarily have to think the exact same. They don't necessarily have to have your same experiences, but they do need to be your equal to make sure that they're going to be an adequate counter part. This is exactly what you've got to understand. When you enter into relationships with somebody that is not your equal, then you don't take on the role of a mate. You actually take on the role of a mentor. I'm going to say that again. When you enter into a romantic relationship with somebody that is not your equal, you don't enter into it as a mate. You enter into it as a mentor, a mental mentor, an emotional mentor, or a spiritual mentor. Women are universal for this. I don't really know a lot of men that do it, but women are universal for this. They are willing to, at all types of extremes, forgive, overlook, and excuse. The areas in a man that don't necessarily match uh, as far to her as uh, to equality speaking, you know, to match her inequality because he's a good catch or he makes a great amount of money or he, um, I don't know, is, is hot off the market or, or whatever the various reasons people get married today happen to be. But when you enter into marriage, you know, by month three, by month five, by year one, you end up realizing how much you actually sacrifice for not being uh, invested in somebody that is your equal. Now, there are reasons that people don't want to marry an equal. And I don't have the time to begin to go into that, but there are a lot of reasons why people wouldn't necessarily want to marry an equal. Some of them may be because if I don't marry an equal, I am empowered. If I don't marry an equal, I feel better about what I bring to the table. I, I, I don't, I'm okay with not uh, having to be challenged. I'm okay with, um, um, I don't know, not having somebody that can engage with me conversationally, or I'm not stretched in 
enough uh, in my personal development to have to come to the next level of maturity and the next level of growth and the next level of, of expansiveness in my thinking and in my mental and my emotional and my spiritual self. So the key to actually having a destructive relationship is date somebody that's not your equal. Pursue somebody that's not your equal. Pursue somebody that is not where you are mentally. How do I know? Now, these are the three primary areas. If it's freezing, just go back and watch it on the replay. Um, but how do I know that someone is not my equal? I'm going to break all of that down. You want to be sure that rela in relationships that you are pursuing or interested in somebody that is your mental, your emotional, and your spiritual equal. Your mental, your emotional, and your spiritual equal. Yes, you want to make sure that we are equals. We don't have to be exactly the same. We don't have to think exactly the same. We don't have to share the same opinions. We don't have to uh, 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 have the same perspectives on things, but we do need to be equals. I love you, beloved, but if you're not equals, somebody is a mentor. Now, let's talk about being a mental equal. Let's talk about being a mental equal. When you are not somebody's mental equal, what has happened is um, your maturity has been affected by either life experiences, by your relationship with God, uh, by, by um, relational experiences that has given you a certain lens by which you look at life. You look at relationships by way you look at pain. But the way you look at letdowns, the way you look at victories, the way you look at setbacks. And um, one of the things that I often teach people is you never really know um, who and what the real person is like until you have seen that real per that person handle hardship. Nobody is ever who they really are when things are going well. You get to see the core of a man and the core of a woman when they experience hardship, when they experience disappointment, when they experience setback. Um, everybody behaves very well when things are going right in life. Uh, when money is where you needed to be, when clarity is where you needed to be, uh, where you know everybody is on their best behavior then. But the best behavior Behavior is not always the authentic them. The, 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 their real self doesn't often show up in a relationship until they have seen something adverse uh, to appear in the relationship. So that's important that you realize. Don't think that just because you have seen them on a few good days and you have witnessed them uh, in a few victories that you actually, you actually know who and what that person is to be. The real person tends to show up after and through disappointment and through setback and all of that stuff. So that's something very very, very important for you to know. Woo! That's fine. Having said that, um, there's a lot of different things that affect how a person is mentally. Um, and there's a lot of ways um, that you can have a person's mental self be revealed. Conversation is one of them. Um, because people tend to talk about the things that are important to them. Understanding is another. Conver understanding is a part of conversation, but the two are not the same. In conversation, I can see how understanding you are, and understanding is a very ex important part of our relationship. If, if a person does not have the mental ability to understand, even when they don't agree, because understanding is not always agreeing. I can understand you, your point of view, your your what you bring to the table without having to agree. We're not fighting for agreement. What we're fighting for is understanding. The basis of our interactions is not that we're always going to agree, uh, but the basis of our interactions or the basis or the weight in our conversations is that we reach for the point of understanding even when we have to have a very necessary disagreement. Now, if the two of us are not on the same mental wavelength, we don't have the same mental depth. We don't have the same mental width. Oh, there's, you know, one of us has been robbed of the opportunity to mature. Uh, one of us is still in adolescence in our mental life then what's going to end up happening is we are always going to uh, 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 struggle when trying to reach a point and a place of understanding. And where there is no understanding, intimacy is under siege. Now listen, if I were writing myself an offering, 
I would add another zero right there. If you're paying attention to what I'm saying, in, in spite of this here freezing, I want you to write that down and I want you to write it clearly. Where there is no understanding, intimacy is under siege. Why? Because the root, the beginning place, the genesis of intimacy is understanding. You cannot say rightfully that you are intimate with anything if the basis and the beginning of it is not understanding. Intimacy is birthed by understanding. That's very important. So this is this is before we even get to the eyelashes and the muscles and what's your zodiac sign, all that stupidity. We're dealing with your mental self and its role in your dating life for this reason a lot of people are not able to find a place of contentment in one relationship because there are certain things that will be there the looks will be there money might be there for some but then something about their mental self is not altogether uh, stimulated or not even altogether challenged because in a dating relationship the vision for it is intimacy and if the vision for it is levels of intimacy and progressive intimacy, then what ends up happens is that is ruined when you realize that there can be no understanding. And if the two of us are not mental equals, then there's going to always be challenges in reaching understanding. That is the woe. That is the challenge. Now, can understanding be faked? Can I fake understanding? Yeah, especially if I'm desperate and, uh, you know, by any means necessary, I just got, you know, I fear being alone. I fear being by myself and I fear having to watch other people. Yes, I can fake understanding, but only to a certain degree. You see, you can fake understanding up until the extent that a real hardship comes, because one of the things that you'll realize about hurt is that hurt will always retrospectively confront the last place of misunderstanding. What does that mean in layman's term? I can I can fake uh, 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 understanding uh, while there is peace, while 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 our communication is serene, while I agree, while you are what I want you to be, while you say what I want you to say, while you do what I want you to do. Um, why, uh, why, while you don't remind me of anyone from my past or don't remind me of my childhood, I can fake up understanding to that point. But it is at the point when who you are and what you represent starts to hit places of wounding in my life, places of expectation in my life and all of that stuff that I no longer can fake understanding because what's going to happen is our conflict is going to reveal where our communication and our understanding was breached. So certainly you can Halloween it up until the next argument. <laughs> and then when the argument comes, then you're going to all you're going to end up going back and you're going to uh, end up b being forced with uh, reckoning with the place where understanding was breached. Are you listening to me out there? So that's the problem of not being a mental equal. It's it's the same reason uh, why somebody in their in in their retirement age, you know, struggles or season of life. Because I don't even know if it's chronological, but in that just season of life, uh, struggles to remember things that they learned when they were in kindergarten, and 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 the reverse is also true. By trying to get somebody that is a kindergartner to to understand uh, principles from somebody that is in the latter portions and the latter seasons of their life. So being a mental equal is very important. Being an emotional equal now. Men and women are different emotionally. Let us resolve that. Let us become resolute in that. We are not the same. Now, pain, hurt, parents um, can all affect how we are emotionally, but in, in the general genuine design of God, we are wired in different ways, okay? We are wired in different ways. But if we are not emotional equals, 
then here's the problem that's going to show up in our relationship. We are not going to both be wired. I want you to hear this and I want you to get this really strongly. If we are not emotional equals, then it's going to be impossible for you, for me, and for us to recuperate, to recover from necessary conflict. If you have a vision for a relationship without conflict, then you have a, a vision for uh, hypnosis. Again, if you have a vision for a relationship without conflict, then you have a vision for hypnosis. I wish you could get that. A vision for a relationship without conflict is a vision for hypnosis. If I robbed us of our right to conflict, then I rob us of our right to really truly know what's important to us, our, our vision for life, our goal for the future, um, what's important to us, what means the world to us, what carries weight and how we evaluate. So without being emotional equals, we cannot verify that we can reduce the amount of time that it takes for somebody to recover after a conflict. Now that absolutely is necessary. It is so necessary that you develop the, the ability to come back from a conflict. Why? Because if you don't come back from conflict and if you don't come back from conflict quick enough, you end up ro robbing your relationship of the opportunity to get closer. You see, if you do conflict the right way, it should be, it should result in closeness. Woo. I wish a married couple would say, I hear you to that. I'm blessing you more than what you're saying. Matter of fact, I may have to go to Facebook Live and share some of this wisdom with them. I said, if you handle conflict the right way, and if you handle conflict in righteousness, it should result in closeness. If you have had conflict and the end result, the bottom line of that conflict was not closeness, then you did not have a purposeful conflict. So without being emotional equals then you cannot find the redemptive purpose or you can't make conflict find a context to end up giving you wisdom for the next level of intimacy in your life if the end result of the conflict was that over a period of time it didn't give you closer both of you wasted your breath that's very important emotional equals finally spiritual equals Spiritual equals. Here is why it is absolutely positive that you will have a destructive relationship if you are not a spiritual equal. It's because of this. Your spirituality, your spirituality and God's vision uh, for your spirituality is going to be translated in your life into convictions. Convictions. And, and this is basically the basis by which we live, what we obey, what we uh, get passionate about, what we consider worth sacrifice, what we consider worth forgiveness, what we live for, what uh, uh, predetermines our vision for life and all of that. Um, and um, if your convictions are in conflict or even worse, if your convictions find themselves adversarial to one another, then your vision for life is going to be under siege. Please hear me. If you can't hear me clearly, go back, watch this, and take notes. I want you to hear what I'm saying. If the two of you clash in conviction, you will clash in vision. You cannot share the same vision with conflicting convictions. Convictions are not born from mentality. 
convictions are not born from from your sign your your what color eyes you like conviction is born from the place and the point of your spirituality so if you are willing to forgive a person's lack of spirituality or if you are willing to dumb yours down okay to become somebody else's didactic somebody else's you know source of, of catechism then what you've done is you have diluted a Holy Spirit uh, 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 invested conviction and you have distorted your vision for life. You have distorted your vision for life. Um, so this is important. You know, if we don't have and if we can't pursue the same, con if we don't share conviction, then we can't share in vision. So the relationship at some point will end up becoming destructive because now we've got two visions. And where you've got two visions, it's called die vision. Anything that's two is die. Die vision. Division. <laughs> and the Bible tells us a house divided against itself can't fail. Now look at this heifer coming here blowing lips. Don't come in here blowing no lips at me. But anyway... So if, if our vision um, is contentious and clashes against each other, um, then it's going to end up showing up in, in what we argue about. It's going to end up showing up in what we keep from each other. It's going to end up showing up in what we share with each other. It's going to end up showing up in how truthful we are with one another. It's going to end up showing up in, in how transparent we are, how forthcoming we are, how sacrificial we are, how empathetic we are, how altruistic we are, how available we are. It's going to show up in all of those ways. So this is why it is so important that more than anything, you be convicted about marrying or dating an equal. Because if they're not an equal, then they're a protege. This is so important. Be prepared for this. This is a part of marriage preparation. One of my sons have an amazing project. In this link, I have included, or in the title, I've included a link that I want all of you to click. Um, I'm a part of a brand new project that we're working on. And since I've been working on this several relationships, I put some material on there that I think you will be blessed by. It's called The One University. The One University. And a part of my belief is that you should be more invested in becoming the one than looking for the one. you got to become the one uh, instead of looking for the one. And um, so I want you to go to that. It's B-I-T dot L Y forward slash my new love life forward slash my new love life B I T dot L Y forward slash my new love life. And I want you to go there, get some resources, share this with anybody you know. It's very important to get the word out about this. Yo, I'm about to do something very unique. I'm about to try to go on Facebook Live. I'm about to see if I can convince my wife to let me use her Facebook to do a Facebook Live. And I'm going to give this lesson all over again. So follow me over there and I'll get less freezing over there. All right. God bless you. Talk to you soon.